Good morning, everyone. I just give it Hello. a few minutes until maybe more people join. It looks like we have seven people on the call. So anybody has anything that uh, they want to bring up or uh, they want to talk about besides what's on the agenda? Okay, so if Nobody has, nobody else has anything. So the item, the main item on the agenda is the QH incubation uh, presentation. So um, Kevin and Jean, are you guys on the call? Uh, yes, I'm on the call. Just give me one minute to see if Kevin wants to join. Okay. Good, thanks. <clears throat> Good. And thanks for running the show in my absence, Ricardo. Most appreciate it. No worries. As you can imagine, I've had one or two things going on the last little while. <laughs> yeah. Work is keeping you busy. Yeah. Facebook has a couple of things going on at the moment, you might have guessed. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hey, Kevin, long yep. time no see. Hello. Hi, Clinton. Hey, you look good. Yeah, I, I don't know why my personal account is not able to log in, so I'm using the QVage account. Do you, need, do you need me to share? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I okay. cannot access uh, Google Docs. Yeah, let me share our talk. Yeah, one more thing. Uh, if you guys are attending, so please add yourself to the uh, as an attendee. So. Yeah, can someone please help me to uh, yeah, edit the document? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think we can start. No, uh, the present button is on the right top. On the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The left of the cherry. Yeah, this one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining the meeting. Uh, I'm Kevin Wan, and uh, Ying is uh, helping to uh, share the slide. So I will just uh, uh, briefly introduce uh, Cubage, uh, the updates uh, since we being accepted as a CNCF sandbox project. All right, next. All right, uh, so Cubage is uh, actually uh, built 
on top of uh, Kubernetes, uh, trying to extend the uh, uh, its functionality to the edge. So uh, provide uh, the fun uh, functionality to manage applications uh, as well as uh, uh, resources as well and uh, uh, IoT devices at edge. So uh, it introduced the the uh, cloud and edge communication uh, functionality to make it work over uh, the limited unstable uh, network between cloud and edge and also uh, provide edge autonomy functionality to make the edge able to work when it's uh, dis disconnected to the cloud. And also KubeEdge did some uh, optimization for uh, low resource uh, use cases, uh, especially for IoT. And also KubeEdge uh, provided some uh, uh, extensible framework to able to uh, uh, connect IoT devices to make it, uh, to simplify the communication between application and uh, devices. Next. Uh, so this is a, a high level architecture of uh, KubeEdge today. Uh, so basically, KubeEdge want to provide the functionality to uh, make a Kubernetes cluster uh, managing the nodes on the cloud in the cloud as well as nodes uh, on the edge. So, uh, on, uh, in the middle, you can see there are mainly two parts of the uh, KubeEdge. So, in the cloud, it's the cloud core. Uh, actually, you can consider it's kind of a operator to do shadow management for the applications and uh, nodes and IoT devices uh, on the edge. Uh, the uh, the next page I will give some more details about the uh, the the things inside the cloud core. So uh, on the edge, we have the edge core. So basically, it has a uh, lightweight uh, Kubelet inside and we uh, introduced the metadata persistency for node level to make it able to uh, work when it's disconnected. Uh, so our, uh, currently uh, it's uh, it's able to uh, integrate with uh, the standard uh, container runtime and as well as uh, container network and uh, CSI. And especially for IoT cases, um, we introduced a standard extensible framework. So uh, uh, on the uh, graph, you can see it's a mapper here. So basically it's a uh, protocol adapter to, to convert between IoT protocols and uh, MQTT. So uh, for, for cases that uh, a application need to communicate with multiple IoT devices, it can just rely on MQTT instead of uh, aware, being aware of Modbus or the other uh, uh, the protocols. So currently, uh, Cubage uh, provide implementation of uh, Modbus, Bluetooth, and uh, OPC UA. Ideally, we want to make it uh, able and easy for end user to integrate with their own uh, uh, IoT, de uh, IoT device protocols. Next. So uh, this is the uh, details today inside the cloud core. So basically we have uh, three controllers. The edge controller is uh, actually doing the shadow management for the Kubernetes core APIs, uh, like a node, pod, config map, and the secret. And device controller here is actually a IoT device controller. So Kubeage for end user uh, introduced a set of CRD to uh, represent the uh, IoT device. So to help simplify uh, when uh, the user developing application to communicate with the device. 
So yeah, so the device controller here is to uh, to deal with the uh, uh, life cycle of the that device CRD, and also do the uh, shadow management to uh, synchronize all the uh, relevant uh, informations to the edge. And the sync controller is uh, recently we added to uh, so basically it's to to do a periodic uh, check to uh, to reconcile just the, in any case the data between cloud and the edge are not up to date so the ad admission webhook is currently uh, doing some uh, crd validation and in the long term we want to also add some uh, best practice enforcement for uh, age scenarios Kevin, can I, so this, can I uh, interrupt and ask a question, or, or would you like me to keep it till the end? I think either is fine. Okay. Yeah, Quentin, just ask, just go ahead. I mean, let's okay. ask right now. Um, yeah, the, the reason, uh, it's useful just because the diagram's up now, and it's probably easy to talk to. So, so I'm kind of curious how you guys deal with inconsistencies. So. So in particular, down at the edge, you have a bunch of uh -huh. nodes. You have software running, and and potentially you can you can modify the the state of of the nodes down there. Um, uh -huh. But then you also have controllers up in the cloud, and it's possible, you know, not only for them to get out of sync. So it's not just like the edge uh -huh. nodes behind, but but actually that there are mutations happening on both sides. And how do you like reconcile the the conflicts there? And what is the mental model that people should have? Should they only control things through the cloud, in which case it's not controllable when the edge is disconnected, or should they control them at both sides, in which case how do you reconcile the conflict? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so actually, uh, like all the uh, metadata, uh, especially the spec, are uh, just uh, come from the cloud. So the, so the uh, edge node will just uh, uh, follow every uh, the like the spec part of the uh, Kubernetes API object, and the agent node would only update the status. And currently, uh, a little bit different uh, we made in Kubeage is, is that we we actually didn't reuse list watch between cloud and the edge because that. That's one. Uh, that one is designed for the data center network. So you can find out that we actually uh, introduced the cloud hub, and also in the edge node we have an edge hub to deal with the connection. So between that, it's a web socket. Web socket is able to to do uh, bi-directional communication. So the model uh, in Kubeage is actually every uh, every update, uh, every information update is uh, is uh, sent by uh, by the cloud. So so for the edge, when it it persistent any uh, updates successfully, it will reply a act. So we will check the if uh, the act successfully received. And we think that's uh, that one one time synchronization is successful. Otherwise, uh, we will retry. And also, the sync controller here is just the recording every uh, object the version number when uh, every time up, update uh, success. So it will compare to the uh, the original object inside the uh, API server. Uh, if there's any uh, version number difference, uh, it will think that it's kind of uh, inconsistency and uh, uh, and uh, send a, an additional update information. Thank you. That that answers my question very well. Perfect. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, so for the uh, Cubage CSI driver here is. Uh, so the for the CSI a little bit different is that um, the the upstream CSI uh, model integration model is also uh, uh, done designed by in the uh, data center network. So here we think uh, for CSI in the edge uh, cases, the whole CSI backend would be uh, on the edge. So 
So the C cube edge CSI driver here is trying to uh, hook some uh, uh, some requests and the response to the uh, to make it send it to the backend to the edge. Then with this uh, uh, plugin, uh, cube edge is able to integrate with any uh, existing third party open source uh, CSI drivers from upstream. So, so you have storage devices, storage volumes, both in the cloud and at the edge, and they're controlled by different, uh, one is the cube edge CSI driver and the other one is the normal uh, cloud drivers, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the cloud, the uh, the user can just uh, install the way they, they did uh, before. Uh, in the edge cases, they need install a, a whole system of CSI, uh, in the in the edge and uh, and then install the Kubeage CSI driver and it will help to uh, send all the uh, requests to the uh, CSI backend and at the edge. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Uh, questions? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Diane. So, if there's like a firmware update that happens on one of these edge devices, how is that all understood from the cloud side? You know, one of these. Uh -huh. um, if, if you have to, and it's one of these tiny devices or even larger network devices, if they need a firmware update because of some security problem or something. Uh -huh. So, yeah, so currently for the uh, IoT devices management, we only deal with the uh, communication part. So that means uh, when this, uh, when a a uh, device is ready uh, connected to the uh, to a node uh, the user can uh, add a custom resource to uh, to tell the uh, device details to the system then the application can reuse that information to uh, to connect to the uh, device we not yet uh, covered uh, like a uh, firmware update uh, in the current implementation can I add something? So actually we are in discuss with uh, Eclipse uh, Hawkbait project. So basically they handle the firmware update because when you update the firmware, you need a full backup of a whole uh, OS on device in case the firmware update uh, fail, they need to roll back. That's provided by the uh, uh, device OS provider. So uh, we, so our plan is uh, collaborate with uh, Hawkbait to do that, the do the uh, uh, firmware update with the on the device. Okay. I have a question. So, um, what is the use case for having storage uh, in the cloud, and also the use case for storage in at the edge? Um, so actually, there are uh, different applications. So, so in the cloud, the uh, the user may just want to have some uh, to do the applications like today they have in the uh, data center, and also in the cloud. Like uh, so, like if the multiple there are multiple uh, application instances inside a a a, a uh, edge site, so they want to share some uh, data. And also, uh, the using CSI on the edge, they can uh, persistent some uh, data. Like for IoT, uh, like industrial IoT, they have a lot of uh, uh, metrics information from from the sen sensor. So they need to uh, they want to persistent uh, persistent that that data in the edge. So that one, if they send it to the cloud, it will uh, uh, use out the uh, network bandwidth. Got it. So, the, uh, so will, would video be one of the, the applications, I guess, for storage at the edge? Uh, so people may be trying to get uh, more video content uh, mm -hmm. faster at the edge, I guess, yeah. Yeah. And then how would that communication happen between the cloud and the edge? Is, I mean, you, there's the sync communication that looks like that's happening through WebSocket, but did you mention also that Quick is also supported between the? 
Yeah, so, uh, so currently uh, a WebSocket is a underlying uh, uh, implementation to, uh, between the cloud and the edge. And also we, uh, we implemented Quick as an alternative. But according to the test result, uh, there's no uh, uh, big improvement and the uh, WebSocket uh, uh, sometimes is more stable. So currently WebSocket is uh, the default protocol. Okay, thanks. I had yeah, another uh, question. Uh -huh. Sorry to. <laughs> Uh, and, and Ricardo, maybe you can keep an eye on the time and, and just shuffle us along. Uh, I don't know how much else we have on the agenda besides this, but please do feel free to shut me up if, if we start running out of time. Yeah. Well, I'm just wondering. Yeah, we don't, sorry, we don't have anything else on the agenda, so we have the whole meeting for this. So. Oh, awesome. Um, so, so mobile phones are in a, in a way um, kind of special cases of edge nodes. Um, they have most of the properties of an edge node and uh, unreliable communication with the cloud and they also have a bunch of sensors and cameras and various other things. Have you guys uh, found any use cases or given any thought to uh, using this for mobile phone kind of application, especially given uh, I was interested in mobile phones? Uh, we are doing a, a, a inference offloading project uh, collaborated with a Crano community. So uh, in the uh, future slides, Kevin will talk about our goal. So basically the Coop Edge will focus on two directions. One is IoT, the other is MEC user case. So that MEC use case is mainly for the technical provider so that uh, provide the, the, the edge, a mobile edge in the technical cases. So connect a mobile phone to the data center. Okay, so, so yeah. MEC is mobile edge cloud. No, it's used to call a uh, mobile edge cloud. Now it's called a multi-access uh, edge cloud. <laughs> because okay. they, they said in the mobile phone, you can switch between the, uh, uh, the, the Wi-Fi and the, uh, the you, you can switch the Wi-Fi or other methods. You, you can switch back and forth. So you can now say, oh, it's only uh, on the technical network, but it, you could jump around. So, but the still need yes. to be. But it's basically mobile phones connected to the cloud running yep. okay cool. and also the, the self-driving cars especially in the new uh, new generation of the telecom network coming so one or more application will fall into this makes sense okay now let's move to the next All right, uh, so this is uh, 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 what we have today uh, in, uh, in the edge node. So basically we have a edge hub that's uh, to deal, uh, to talk with cloud hub to, uh, to, to manage uh, the, uh, the messaging uh, between cloud and edge. And also the metadata manager is the, uh, to deal with the, uh, node level metadata persist, uh, persistency. Basically, it will persistent uh, part uh, config map uh, and also the uh, the node information and the secrets uh, uh, on the edge. So the HD currently we uh, re actually removed some of the uh, packages of from the uh, vanilla uh, coolet. So currently it's a it's basically a lightweighted uh, coolant. In the early days, we 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 did some inline uh, code change, but while we are in the middle way to uh, to reduce their inline uh, code change. Anyway, that's a detailed thing. So for the device train, that that one is to uh, to to actually. So the the concept is from IoT uh, scenario. So that one is to deal with the uh, IoT devices when when any uh, uh, information uh, like the sensor data come from the uh, IoT device, it will uh, to duplicate the information uh, one persistent uh, on the edge node and another one send it to the cloud. 
So that one also uh, represents on the uh, device CRD. So the difference here is currently we only actually deal with, or uh, we re recommend the device twin to deal with like the uh, switch and some uh, like uh, kind of static uh, uh, properties from the uh, uh, device because that, that one, the, uh, the data uh, don't have much data. So it's it's uh, it's easy to uh, synchronize for the heavy load. Uh, if there's a, a the the IoT device is uh, producing a large amount of data, we would uh, recommend end user to deploy a TSDB to also and also uh, integrate integrate with the other uh, IoT pipeline uh, middleware to to kind of reduce the data and pick the useful things. And the edge mesh here is actually uh, uh, the uh, service and, uh, and the node level DNS implementation, uh, implementation here. So we try to uh, simplify the uh, service discovery and the service communication with, uh, uh, on the edge, especially in cases the nodes are located in different subnets. The uh, the communication between uh, the subnets would be a, a big challenge. The event bus here is actually to deal with the, uh, basically the events. So uh, conf uh, converting from the uh, raw MQTT uh, uh, the raw MQTT structure to the device stream. Yeah. Okay, next. So uh, for the community growth, uh, growth uh, I want to highlight that currently QVH is uh, uh, becoming uh, more and more healthy. So uh, here are some numbers comparing to the uh, early days when we uh, being accepted as a sandbox project. Uh, you can find out the uh, number of contributors are now, uh, we have more than 300. So actually uh, in, for those uh, the code contribution, we have more than 100. So GitHub stars, uh, we have now uh, uh, 2,500 and also uh, uh, forks, uh, we uh, grow six times, and the maintainers, currently we have the uh, 14 maintainers. So maintainers here, including the uh, maintainers and the approvers. And the contributing member organization, uh, that's a big improvement. Uh, the early days, we have only one, and now we have more than uh, 25. And also, uh, we are currently uh, working on some of the uh, cross-community collaboration, uh, like Kubernetes IoT Edge Working Group, and also we are uh, closely working with Acrino. We have uh, there are two blueprint there uh, using uh, Cubage. Yeah, and also the under discussion is the uh, Eclipse Foundation. Yeah, on the right. Uh, these, uh, there are four uh, top new contributors uh, in during 2019. And uh, you can see the, our uh, contribution chart is steady going up. So very steady, there's no uh, big gap. So very uh, steady development. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is a bit about the uh, contribution and the adoption. So you can find out there are uh, uh, different types of uh, organizations and the companies contributing to the QVH, uh, including the uh, IoT and the hardware companies like ARM, Samsung, and also uh, we have telecos. So uh, currently they are all from China and we are also under uh, uh, interaction with the other uh, uh, telecos and also we have IT service providers uh, and also cloud providers contributing to the project 
and especially we have uh, some ad academics joining the project as well. So, uh, so for the uh, user adoption, currently we have uh, more than 20, but only a few uh, get confirmed to uh, make public. So I also listed them here. Okay, next. So uh, this is one, so this one is actually currently the biggest, uh, uh, the largest uh, end user adoption. Uh, the end user name, we are still under confirmation, but uh, I'd like to share the uh, some of the uh, adoption information. So basically this is a, uh, uh, it's a uh, highway uh, ETC uh, ecosystem in China. So the user want to uh, build the, the whole system, uh, whole system based on the cloud native uh, technologies. So the architecture oh, is there. What is, an, what is an ETC system? Uh, electronic toll collection. It's just a high uh, freeway toll. It's more like uh, on your uh, bridge. I'm familiar with the acronym. Yep. Yeah, yeah so. Okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. It's like a fast track or something on, on on the highway when when somebody's driving and automatically charges you, right? So. Yeah, no, I understand that. Uh, I just didn't know what ETC was. Thank you. All right. Uh, so the uh, so the whole architecture is that they uh, they want to uh, manage the whole system by a, a central cloud, so they can uh, currently they uh, uh, they using a uh, Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes and the Kubage to manage the uh, the toll application and distribute it to the uh, the ETC gates, uh, ETC stations in the different uh, province uh, in China. The all the toll uh, data would uh, go into their uh, own toll system in in their uh, on prem on prem data center. So the biggest challenge here is the uh, the, to uh, the actually the the ETC gate is really far away from the uh, central cloud data center. The uh, network is uh, very unstable and the bandwidth is uh, very limited. So uh, QVH helped the, uh, to make it e much easier because it's able to. Uh, to synchronize the information be, uh, over uh, internet and uh, uh, make it able to make, especially for the age nodes, uh, it's able to work when it's disconnected to the cloud. So uh, currently uh, they are using uh, coverage to manage uh, more than 50,000 age nodes. And also there are uh, 500,000 uh, containers in total currently. So the currently the, the, in the inside the containers are mainly the toll applications. Uh, they have planned to uh, to do uh, to develop the vehicle infra uh, infrastructure uh, cooperative uh, cooperative system, and also that one would uh, use the uh, uh, cloud native technology as well. So for the agent nodes, the underlying architecture, uh, they have the uh, most of the uh, agent nodes are the uh, ARM CAN servers, and also they have some uh, uh, x86 uh, IPC. So IPC is uh, industrial uh, PC. Uh, it's kind of a, a small uh, PC. So if for the uh, Business uh, perspective: They are currently managing, uh, dealing with uh, 300 million data records every day. So, uh, for the for the uh, the benefits, the uh, from a driver perspective, the the time used to passing through the toll system, uh, toll station, uh, you can find out it's uh, it's a big improvement. For the uh, the car, uh, it now only take two seconds because uh, they don't need to uh, stop and uh, manually deal with the uh, the bidding stuff. 
And uh, for a truck, uh, you can find it's it's uh, it's a even uh, larger improvement. Okay, next. So uh, this one is a uh, a smart campus and the user. So uh, uh, basically, they want to. Uh, to make the uh, uh, the campus smart with some AI functionality. So uh, the end user, uh, actually they have, they already have, have some IP camera in in the campus and they don't have uh, the, uh, the wires for uh, dealing with the, uh, uh, and also the uh, much power, uh, uh, redundant power stuff for the, uh, making it smart. So the QVH used here is to, the way uh, they use QVH here is they have the, uh, uh, they have some room to uh, to manage some uh, uh, the PC and the CAN servers. So they install QVH uh, uh, there to manage some uh, containerized applications. And for the camera, because uh, it has the uh, interface to uh, to to expose the uh, video stream uh, through a IP address. The applications uh, can can uh, can get these uh, get their video through the IP address. So in the cloud, um, because there are not uh, the the underlying server is not that powerful on the edge. So currently, like the uh, the uh, high level analysis is still uh, doing in the cloud. So basically on the edge, the, uh, the QVH is helping to manage the applications to do uh, like face recognition and also uh, flow analysis, like how many people are entering uh, a gate uh, per hour like that. So for the end-to-end uh, uh, -end benefits, uh, this uh, this solution helped the, the campus uh, uh, saved uh, around uh, thirty percent uh, uh, replace the low work because they uh, they need less uh, security guards they can just uh, rely on the uh, camera and the AI applications and also for like the visitors entering the gate uh, it's much smarter. Uh, with the AI functionality. So it's a, it just needed seconds to, for a visitor uh, entering the campus. Okay, next. Just a quick comment here. I, I would imagine um, oh, yes. that this is a fairly big uh, uh, use case where for AI related systems, a lot of the inference happens at the edge and, and you have yeah. um, constantly updated retrained models that have to be pushed out to all these edge locations uh, regularly and sometimes constantly. So is that a, is that a use case that you've seen for these kind of deployments? Yes, uh, yes. Yes, we are, we are seeing that. And also that's why we uh, uh, collaborated with Acrino, this a uh, called uh, machine learning offloading uh, framework developer uh, based on Kube Edge. So that's the, uh, uh, we talk about in the previous slides is a Crano Kubeedge offloading service in the that blueprint is running on the Crano community based on Kubeedge. Very, very cool. And we, we can uh, set up some demos uh, if uh, we need, so we can show how we uh, use a mobile phone and offload the uh, emotion recognition to the edge. Then if that's not enough, we uh, we have the constant uh, train model push from the cloud to the edge. So that's the demo is uh, just early in the early stage, but uh, the final release will be uh, in the early Q4, but we already have the uh, first edition of our demo ready. So we are going to set up a, a environment, have a uh, edge behind firewall. We have the uh, uh, cloud set up on AWS to demo uh, this environment. So then you can use cell phone to access the edge server and yeah, something like that. The, the, the cloud running on a public cloud, your server running behind the enterprise firewall, but your 
a cell phone can connect to the uh, edge to offload your uh, inference requirement, the inferencing. Yeah, I think it would be, I think it'd be really useful to, to provide that demo both at uh, the, the, the upcoming KubeCons, there's the one in China, but I guess the US one is towards the end of the year again, <clears throat> um, but also perhaps do a very condensed demo, maybe five minutes or 10 minutes to the TOC. Um, I think there was a fair amount of interest in in using Kubernetes in very, very different ways than it was originally designed for, because this is not what you know the, the Kubernetes designers had in mind. But it's uh, clearly very useful for these kinds of things. Um, so I think we should we should really um, kind of get the message out there. Not all the details necessarily. I mean, this is a great presentation for this group, um, but I think just you know, one slide with the architecture and then uh, a quick demo of, of, of a very uh, sort of easy to understand use case would be super valuable in getting the message across. Thank you. Thank you for the suggestion. If uh, we have time at the end of the meeting, I can show a quick uh, overview of that project, the architecture. Yeah, let's, thank you. Okay, uh, let's move on. All right, so this is a okay, so this is a brief history about the uh, project. So uh, before uh, one dot zero, we actually uh, moved the one dot zero uh, in uh, twenty nineteen. So before one zero, uh, we are actually focusing on the uh, fundamental uh, applications. Like uh, so, mainly it's to provide lightweight age components and also. Uh, to uh, provide a uh, core API support on the edge. So, uh, and then we, add, we are trying to add some more uh, uh, useful functionalities like, uh, so also like we, uh, we verify the container D integration. So for CubeAge itself, the, uh, the component in the edge currently takes uh, 70 megabytes. And also like uh, recently, in 1.3, we verified the uh, cryo int uh, integration. So cryo takes only uh, uh, 30 megabytes. So that makes it possible for QH to manage uh, very small CAN servers, like uh, probably uh, even down to uh, uh, 256 megabytes servers. Okay, so I won't go to the uh, details about the uh, features. So yeah, let's yeah. move to the oh, next. Yeah, I add one thing is uh, uh, from mm -hmm. this year, we're already into the regular release cycle. So we have a three month uh, release cycle. It's kind of a one month behind the upstream Kubernetes release. We are going to incorporate a new uh, release of Kubernetes integrate. Then we release Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. So it's about a month after a formal Kubernetes release. So we are also in the uh, quarterly uh, three months release cycle now. So very regularly that will help all the uh, community member understand our release cycle and have a, uh, their contributions. Uh, they are aware of when they could be alive and integrated into the main branch. Yep. Okay. Um, Sorry, I, for got, the I got interrupted there. I hope I didn't miss something. I had one quick question. Um, so how mm -hmm. do you, and, and this may have been covered, I just got interrupted by a dog. Um, so, so you, clearly there's, there's a lot more to Cube Edge than, than traditional Kubernetes and there's a lot of custom components and things, uh, but there's some amount of it which shares like APIs and stuff with, with parts of Kubernetes. Um, how do you deal with keeping the two in sync? Is this, is this a, just a hard fork of Kubernetes at some point and you never plan to, to sort of synchronize the two or, or do you have some plans to somehow keep the, the Kubernetes parts in sync with, with more recent versions of Kubernetes? So uh, actually, uh, in early days, we are hosting uh, some of the inline changes uh, for the kubelet because we want to make it small uh, on the edge. So uh, during last uh, few months, we have moved it the uh, more uh, easier way. So we are we are currently uh, vendoring the uh, the kubelet uh, code and. Uh, 
So basically, we rewrite the code entrance to to only uh, load the packages we think that's necessary on the edge. And for for the API support, that's uh, easy. We just rely on the client code. Yeah. So, so currently, it's we don't have we don't have any chain to client go. So we keep sync with uh, upstream Kubernetes API. We don't make any yeah. change. Only a few changes on the Kubernetes side. Uh, Sorry, maybe I wasn't clear. So I'm, I'm talking about the cloud side as well as the edge side. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in the uh -huh. cloud, the, the API server, not the client. I don't that, think we that... changed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. No, uh, so on the cloud, we, it's a uh, additional set of controllers. So that that's not uh, no. We don't need any change to the uh, the Kubernetes control plan uh, components. So the only thing is that we currently uh, reconstructed the uh, Kubelet to yeah, basically, uh, ignore uh, some uh, modules when running it on the edge. Yeah, okay, basically, so the outside is vanilla Kubernetes. That's that's great news. Thank you. Yeah, what well, we don't have, we we don't change the upstream cloud side of Kubernetes. We just, uh, we 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 just uh, take the upstream directly. However, we don't yeah. uh, blind it. We we just, I said, it take a month because we want to see if it's any uh, new APIs if we support or not. So basically, we only extend the uh, cloud API. We don't change any of them. So we are compatible with upstream all the time. We don't have any hard fork on the cloud side. Excellent, thank you. Uh, question, so do you have a support matrix? Uh, so one of the problems with Kubernetes, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a problem, but th is yeah, that- Yeah, we do. They, okay, so they release every three months uh, now, or so at four releases a year. Uh, yeah. And now they're going down to, uh, I think three, but uh, you know, one of the challenges is, you know, keeping track with that API and, and, and the changes in the API, right? So, so I guess you have a, you have a matrix already that uh, identifies this and says that this version is, it's, uh, works yeah, with sure. uh, one Kubernetes 115 and 116 or whatnot. Okay. Yeah, I just shared, that's our uh, compatible matrix. So yeah, okay. that, that's, we keep track of, that's why we, uh, kind of a month behind the upstream release. So we fully compatible with the cloud API uh, from the Kubernetes. So we, we just, we don't fork, we just use it. We just wander in here. Okay, thanks. Okay. Sorry. Just uh, can you go back to the slide? Yeah. Yep. Uh, I'm looking for that. It's here. Sorry, give me one second. Where is the code? Yeah, the window is gone. Just give me one second. I can project if you need to. Yeah, you can. I cannot find a window. Weird. Sure, I'll get it. It's only one page left. Oh, yeah, I see. Something's broken in Zoom recently. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't. Seems to do it easily either. Yeah, because uh, today is June 4th, the Tiananmen Square anniversary. There's a censorship in internet in China. Okay. Let so me... here I see. It yeah, doesn't allow me that, to. Uh, oh, there you go. Yeah, I, I can open it if you can. Add it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm struggling as well. I don't have the link to the slides. So I don't yeah, know. it's in the meeting notes. I, I can share now. Okay. Oh, there we go. We can see. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. 
So uh, for the uh, follow-up plan, uh, from the uh, community perspective, basically we want to uh, have wider uh, user adoption. And also, um, yes, next. Yeah, and also uh, we are uh, working on to uh, uh, attract more uh, developer to join in the uh, project development. And also, uh, we we did some we did some evangelist uh, last year, and this year uh, we are also joining like the uh, the Google Summer of Code and the Community Bridge to uh, help more uh, promote the. Uh, project and for the uh, so actually for uh, for the community governments we uh, this year especially we want to enforce uh, the six so uh, currently there are uh, the two are about to uh, get started one is the uh, the uh, device IOT or IOT device we already have some uh, uh, participant uh, uh, companies joining the discussion, uh, uh, discussing about to improve the uh, device CRD as well as the uh, device mapper framework and uh, provide a more uh, uh, useful uh, reference architecture to simplify for uh, for end users uh, when they try to integrate their uh, own uh, device protocols. And for MEC, uh, so because the, this it's kind of uh, uh, different bit, uh, with the IoT. So for the MEC six, uh, currently are uh, mainly the telecos joining to discuss uh, how to uh, use Cubage to provide a uh, the uh, common uh, underlying infra infrastructure to enforce the the whole MEC system. So. Yeah, so the uh, the current status of these two SIGs are, are discussing the uh, the SIG charts and probably will be announced in the following month. And uh, uh, for the technical thing, uh, we especially, uh, uh, so for the two SIGs, we, we definitely will uh, add, do some uh, more development and add some more uh, advanced features uh, to uh, better uh, serve the uh, device IoT and the MEC. But in general, we want to, uh, to uh, integrate more, uh, to do more integration with uh, CNCF projects as, as well as uh, RFH projects. And also we, uh, we will keep working on uh, to improve the reliability and the security to better uh, uh, serve the end user adoption. Yeah, we have the uh, project uh, uh, roadmap link. And the, uh, so in the last, I think uh, we need the uh, uh, help from SIG Runtime to uh, recommend for uh, incubation in the uh, CNCF that would be uh, help the project better moving forward. Uh, yes. Yeah, I think that's more oh, about the uh, material. Sorry, didn't mean yeah, to that, interrupt. That's all. Uh, that's all about the material. Yeah. I haven't I haven't spoken to the rest of the SIG about this, but but just based on purely on what I've seen here, and I, I know, as you know, quite a lot about the project from from years gone by when I was working at Huawei. Um, I mean, this looks like a perfect candidate for incubation to me. It's uh, it's clearly got some momentum. It's clearly not, you know, uh, mature enough for for finalization for graduation yet. But it's it's a great candidate for incubation. It has enough momentum. It has a bunch of companies involved, uh, and and it's in use in in you know production in a, at least a few use cases. So it sounds like a very very good in incubation project to, to me. And it's also the first that I'm aware of anyway, the first major uh, Kubernetes project, which is sort of a very specific specialization of Kubernetes that, that was not really intended for, which I think is, is interesting in itself.
Yep, I fully agree with that. So, yes. I think it's, yeah, uh, thank you. Yep. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, thank you. Next, step, next steps will be to uh, start working on the document uh, recommendation due diligence document. Right? Yeah. Sure. Do we have any volunteers? Does anyone have the bandwidth and the knowledge available to be able to do a good job of having a look at this? So, so to be clear, we need you to go and look at the code. Uh, maybe you know, install it, uh, try it out. Um, talk to a couple of uh, uh, customers if possible and, and just make sure that, uh, I mean, I, our job is to make sure that what Kevin's told us is all true. Uh, that's one of our jobs. Uh, if it is, then I think this is a great project, uh, but somebody has to just go and dig around a little bit and make sure that, uh, that this is all um, as it seems. So uh, do we have any volunteers for that? Any volunteers? Stun silence. All right, uh, I can I can volunteer to do that then. Um, let me see, Kevin. Do you have a, a, a sort of a, an envisaged timeline? Uh, I imagine. Well, when is the date for KubeCon China? I don't remember. It's July. Uh, so it's mm -hmm. July thirty to August the first. Okay, so so that would be one obvious deadline where we would like this thing. Uh, to be in incubation by then, I assume. Uh -huh. Yes, it's uh, about a uh, uh, forty-five to fifty days. Yeah, something like six weeks. Um, so we would need to give the you know I, I don't they're, they're busy working on what the process is and I haven't been following that discussion too closely. But I would imagine that the TOC need at least a couple of weeks just to kind of open this up for public uh, scrutiny, etc. So unfortunately, yeah, it looks like it looks like we'll have to have this uh, due diligence done ideally in the next two weeks, I'd say the, in the worst case by the end of June, um, just to give about two weeks for a public review yeah. and then the TOC can hopefully vote after that. So um, Ricardo, maybe you can um, just get in contact, or, or is Diane's left already? Hey? Is that, or is she still here? Yeah, I see. Uh, she's still here. Oh, she, okay. She's, uh, not, she's not on the call yet. Uh, okay. Anymore. Um, so, so what we need to do is just make sure that everybody's kind of ready and, and knows what the timeline is. Otherwise, this thing's going to get delayed and we're not going to meet that deadline. So I can, I can do my best to try and crank out uh, a brief sort of uh, due diligence document in the next, let's say, three weeks. Um, but we, we do then need to make sure that we have the dates lined up for public uh, review and TOC vote before uh, KubeCon China starts. So Ricardo, maybe I can ask you to, to line all of that stuff up and I'll focus on the due diligence unless there's anybody else who would like to help with that. Yeah, so, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Um... Well, maybe we can think offline off and, and, and coordinate and how, we, uh, how we're going to go about it. Does that, does that sound Sounds good? Sounds good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to run. Yeah. Uh, thanks for a great presentation, Kevin and Yin. Uh, that was very interesting. And congratulations on making such great progress in the last, uh, what, two years, I guess? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank thank you. you for the, uh, the advice. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. So appreciate.